Monday, June 11th, 2018, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So there's a battle raging on to keep precious metals uh, suppressed right now. Silver is actually leading the battle for that breakout. And I'll uh, show you why uh, later with charts and also looking at the uh, commitment of traders uh, from the U.S. for the futures, for gold and silver futures. Uh, it's 8.24 a.m. I'll quickly go through uh, what the markets are doing this morning. Uh, so spot gold is 12.9750. It's uh, down a dollar fifty. The range has been 12.9650 to 13.0150. So very uh, narrow range overnight. Spot silver up six at 16.83. Uh, it has been as high as 16.94 and as low as 16.73. So silver is moving a, a bit more than gold at the moment. Uh, the Dow is up 48. 25,360, up 0.19 of a percent. S&P is up uh, a point and three quarters, uh, not even 0.1 of a percent. And the NASDAQ 100 future is basically unchanged this morning, so not much. Stock's fairly quiet. Uh, Currency-wise, we're seeing the, the dollar go up against the European currencies today. Or sorry, the dollar go down against the European currencies. The pound is up a quarter of a percent at 134.40. The euro is up 0.4 of a percent at 118.15. Uh, but the dollar is up against the yen. So that's kind of uh, counterbalancing uh, the dollar index. Uh, dollar is up uh, 0.4 of a percent against the yen, just under 110. It's 109.98 right now. So that's uh, the currencies. Uh, U.S. 10-year uh, yield is up two basis points this morning at 296. Uh, the, the high has been 297. We have the Fed meeting starting tomorrow. And with the announcement on Wednesday, we have a press conference. The Fed is expected to raise rates. Uh, and they'll come out with their economic forecasts as well. And there will be a press conference Tomorrow is the uh, Kim Trump meeting as well. Um, Italian yields have dropped back sharply this morning. They were back above 3% on uh, Friday. Now they're at 286. They're down 27 basis points. So Italy is going to stay very volatile, I think. Uh, for the UK today, there's some imp important economic data coming out. For my UK viewers, at 9.30 in about an hour's time, we've got industrial production and manufacturing production in the UK and construction output. So I was talking about earlier how there's a battle for uh, in precious metals. It is. Uh, it, you can clearly see it that uh, their forces trying to keep gold and silver down. Silver is really trying to break out, and I'll show you why. Uh, show you this chart here. You can see that uh, this, uh, yeah, this triangle. We're we're right uh, at the uh, top here of this trend line. Uh, earlier last week, we tried to break above that line, and it failed. Uh, and today, it's back up above that line. You can see there is very clear. Uh, it, we did try to break out earlier in the year, but it c quickly came back down. And why is that uh, breakout so important? Well, look at the longer term chart. This is where we are right now. This is like a, a very, you know, this is like uh, back to 2014. And you can see uh, why they want to keep silver from going above uh, that trend line. But we're getting very close to the uh, apex of that triangle. So the end of the triangle there. We might very well see go, uh, silver go up to 17 uh, during the day, but you can bet that uh, the bullion banks, uh, the manipulators of uh, the monetary system will try to bring it down. And why do I say the manipulators of the monetary system? Well, because the fiat money system that we have, uh, the Achilles heel or the, the, the two indicators that show that something is wrong with them are gold and silver. Because uh, the prior to the fiat money system that 
uh, the floating rate exchange system that we got after Nixon defaulted on U.S. gold obligations under Bretton Woods in 1971. It was based on gold and to some extent on silver. Silver in a lot of the European countries until 1968 was a change, was money. Uh, in the U.S. is until 1964. The U.K., uh, not as the U.K., that ended in 1947 after the war. Um, but, uh, and now I'll show you gold. Gold is very interesting as well. You can see here in this shorter term chart. I thought earlier, uh, towards the end of May, when we held the 1280 area there, and we started going up, I thought we were gonna go up on that uh, trend line that uh, is quite sharp. But uh, it looks like they've, that's what they're trying to do to keep it from bouncing back up. Maybe the uh, catalyst for the markets, uh, precious metals to go higher, will be uh, the FOMC meeting on Wednesday. We might have to wait a little more. And I'll show you why also uh, the, the longer term chart of gold. Uh, so you can see why that trend line here is very important as well. I've drawn these almost parallel lines when uh, gold rallies. Um, I guess the first one on the bottom left, it did take a while for it to to bottom and go up. And this time it's taking a, a bit longer. Uh, what about the commitment of traders? Uh, something I don't really look at too much, but uh, they are, they're published, uh, I think, towards the end of the week. And their data based on the Tuesday close. So tomorrow, for example, they'll uh, set the numbers and then they'll publish the commitment of traders later in the week. I think it's, I'm not sure if it's Thursday or Friday. I don't follow it very closely. Uh, but uh, one thing that I'll notice here, you can see Gold Commodity Exchange Inc. Uh, designated commitment of traders. So the producer merchants, those are the bullion banks. So you can see that the shorts positions went down by 30,000. So that means that the bullion banks are short covering and uh, maybe they, they know that gold and silver are going to go higher. Uh, there you go, minus 30,000. Uh, they went, uh, they increased their long positions by 8,500, uh, the bullion banks. Total open interest is 450,641. What about silver? Is uh, above here. It says uh, producer merchant, that's the bullion banks, the commercials, you want to call them, uh, short, long positions dropped. So they, they actually, uh, decreased long positions and they also decreased the short positions by 338. So there's not much to, uh, really dissect there. The gold is more interesting. So uh, what about cryptocurrencies? Uh, yeah, cryptocurrencies have had a, a rough uh, time over the last 24 hours. Uh, they've dropped a lot. You, you looked at yesterday at the, at the uh, coin market cap or world, world, uh, worldcoinindex.com, everything was red. And uh, yeah, it kind of continues this morning. Um, but uh, it seems to have stabilized now. Ethereum is back up to 535. Bitcoin, 6,800. EOS dropped below 11. Now it's 11.23. Am I concerned? No, because I've said <clears throat> in the past that cryptocurrencies are, are still uh, very speculative. Um, even Bitcoin, of course, uh, they don't have the quality that gold and silver have of being a stable store of wealth yet. It will take a lot of time. EOS block producer voting. Uh, yeah, it's kind of picked up uh, overnight. It, it started very slowly. And now we've got uh, almost 2% of the voting done. 1.83%. Uh, the uh, scoreboard, so to speak, has changed a lot. We've got two Korean block producers now. One and two. Uh, we've got Liquid EOS number three. I'm not sure where they're from. Um, EOS New York, which had been doing yell well yesterday, is now down to eighth. I, I noticed that EOS, Argentina EOS, they were like uh, not even the top 21 yesterday, and now they're 11, so they've moved up a lot. Um, EOS Rio Brazil is number 15. 
they were like number five last night when I went to bed, so they've dropped. So it's still early days. 15% uh, of the voting uh, power or is required for the, uh, how can I say, the blockchain or the chain to go to be live and to be validated. So uh, it, it's picked up quite a bit. So 1% in the last few hours, and it took uh, almost half a day to get up to 0.83%. Federal Reserve, yeah, they're expected to raise rates. Uh, it's a, it's more, the markets are going to focus more on what they say and their pro economic projections. Uh, do I believe in the, what the Fed says? No, I think they're uh, central banking. As you know, I don't believe in the, uh, in the institution of central banking because it's not really free. It's not a market institution. Uh, it's a hybrid government and uh, private business. Uh, and the quicker it goes, the better. Um, of course, uh, very few people, you know, not everyone like us who watch the alternative media and know about uh, the system uh, even care to think about central banking. But I think people, more and more people are becoming conscious of it. Uh, so let's hope uh, uh, we keep uh, spreading, uh, spreading this message. So that's why if you enjoyed this video, and my videos in general, please uh, like, share them. Also subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. And you can also follow me on Steemit, DTube, and on Twitter. And uh, I'll talk to you later. Uh, take care. Bye.